Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays Week with Nation, where you ask me questions, and I am stuck wearing a onesie for the rest of May. Uh, I figure I might as well get that explanation done right off the bat. Only reason I'm wearing this thing is because over on Twitch, I had set goals for the month of May. I was partnered on Twitch for four months on May 23rd, and as such, I have to wear one of these things for the entire month. Uh, not just wear it, like, casually, but... I have a couple of them, and I can swap between them occasionally, so that's why I'm wearing this thing right now. I had to go out and buy a, an extra one just because of that over on May. But that's, I figure I'll get that explanation out of the way right off the bat, because otherwise, well, yeah. So without that, anyway, we have Final Fantasy XIV patch 4.3 confirmed for May 22nd. We have Dauntless Open Beta confirmed for May 24th. We have Blesses Closed Beta. I'll be playing that on the 28th. And then on top of that, we have finally Ultimate on June 5th. So uh, next few weeks are going to be pretty busy. Uh, Maple Story 2, I got to play that closed beta. That wipes on May 16th, so I don't want to put too much more time into that before the, uh, before the closed beta wipe. So it's going to be busy month coming up, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, especially 4.3. It's always good to have like a bunch of very clear directions on what videos I'm going to be doing for a set period of time but anyway we got uh, about 11 questions on the forums and then we'll take some questions from the twitch chat which hopefully are pretty good this week then we'll do our our uh, patron our sponsor shout outs towards the end and then we'll uh, we'll call it a QA. so maybe it'll be longer than last week's let's find out all right question number one over on the forums hey mr h how you doing i don't know why when you say mr h i just i immediately hear mr j Anyway, to improve your week, have a bonus of your favorite burger from your favorite burger joint. Nom nom. I don't know what my favorite burger from my favorite burger joint even would be. I've had so many good burgers since, like, moving out of New Jersey. But I don't know. I'll just, just all of the best ones. How about that? There was a question last week about Glazia, Labolus, and Circus Tower and what his mechanics were. My question is thus. Will dungeons and raids in the roulettes be changed so we can't kill them without having to mechanic? Or will they be left as they are? What do you prefer? Just leave them as they are. It's not worth the development time. And yes, it would take development time to ensure that you, they are balanced in such a way where you have to do mechanics. Keep in mind, unless they're going to hard stop their HP and then make you do something, the only other way to do it is to balance the kill speed around that. And guess what? When the next expansion comes out and we get new job changes and the lower level stuff doesn't work the same way as it did before, then you got to do it again. And it's a constant upkeep of trying to make sure that it works that way. What I would say is that I think going forward, they need to stop designing uh, dungeon bosses with these huge breaks in between what their actual skill usages are. I mean, you have just some bosses that like will do in a dungeon, they'll do a mechanic and then they don't really do anything of importance for like another 20 seconds. Like speed up the rate at which they actually go through all their intended mechanics. So that way you're guaranteed to see them at least by the time the boss is dead. You know, you're not going to be getting towards the end. Another big example is the fact that with Ultima Weapon in, uh, or the Ultima Warrior in, uh, in Fractal Hard Mode, like, you, sometimes I don't even see past the ver the first mechanic he selects, but at least it's a random mechanic, and I'll see the one whole thing. So, uh, I don't know, I, there, I don't think it's worth going back and doing anything to adjust that, because it's way more effort than it's worth. But I think going forward, they may want to look at the way they design bosses like that and maybe just not delay certain mechanics or maybe make mechanics, at least the, the primary mechanics like Glasla's big ads, be more focused on when you hit a certain HP threshold and less about uh, how much time has actually happened during the encounter. Question number two, sup haps, yo. So 4.3 in the way, I fear it'll be same old, same old. Oh, this is, a, this is always a wonderful question. I love Heavensward. It feels a vast improvement over Realm of Born with Stormblood. It's turning out to be a carbon copy of Heavensward. I like the quality of Stormblood gave us, the direction, but some of the other content, PvP, Raid, Story, and Relic Weapons, has had a negative progression in my opinion. In his opinion. He's not saying it outright. I appreciate that, by the way. I know it's too soon to speculate, but I strongly hope the next expansion is the same. What do you think about Square Enix's current roadmap or the remaining patches? So, I'll, I mean, I'm just going to say this. I don't know... Heaven's Word was basically the same exact thing. And I don't mean the same exact thing as Stormblood. I mean, it was the same exact thing as A Realm Reborn. They added a few new things. Stormblood's been that. Now it's the exact same as Heaven's Word, plus they've added some new things. People were complaining that the Relic Quest didn't have its own unique zone or story or, or well, it did, but not much of it. It didn't have its own unique content. Basically, it was only recycled old content. So what did they do? They made Eureka, which was its own content, even if somewhat repetitive. Let's be honest, the Relic Quest had been nothing but that this entire time, and the expectation to change that was probably unlikely. PvP, I completely agree. I don't even PvP, but I've seen some of the changes from the outside. I think they need to go back to the drawing board a little bit on that one. Raid... 
other than not being a big fan of Omega just basically being a tournament arc, uh, I've been really happy with the raid, and the 24 man has also started off incredibly strong. Story, I don't know, I've liked Stormblood Story. I've, I'm one of those people that's preferred Stormblood Story over Heavensward, although there's moments that, for me, in 3.0 Story in particular, I think shined a little bit more. Uh, I've overall preferred Stormblood Story thus far, especially the way that it's managed to progress. 4.1 for me, was one of the better non, I guess, uh, not major, major story patches, like a, at least a point one patch story wise. So I don't know. I, I like you said, it was in your opinion. So I disagree with a lot of that stuff. But again, I feel Stormblood has just been while it's been Heavensward, it's been quality of life on Heavensward. It's been new stuff, new takes on things. And now we'll see, you know, the changes that they've made with Heaven on High. They took Deep Dungeon, was successful, make changes to the new one, make it accessible to higher levels, and then also change the formula a little bit so that way people can access the more hardcore aspect of it, of the higher tier floors, without having to uh, spend as much time. I'd say that's been the number one thing about Stormblood. Stormblood seems to respect people's time, so much so to the point where those people who are like me, who dedicate way too much time to getting shit done, uh, as fast as possible where we will get it done so much faster than before just because it's so quality of life that you can get through it without being someone who plays like 15 20 hours a day it does any of that shit you know so that might be the biggest thing that's affecting stormblood and uh a lot of people's feeling about the longevity of it otherwise i felt that it's an overall higher quality product and i think it shows in a lot of ways Except for PvP. That PvP people, I don't know what you gotta do, but you gotta get through to them where they're going wrong on that front. Alright, question number three. Hey, Haps. Hi. Two questions if you got time. Well, it's the third question, so I only won't know if I don't have time until, like, the later questions. But I have time, so you're good. Question number one. What's your opinion on super grindy achievements? I So, I think I actually touched on this in a recent video when they were talking about quality of life updates. I think having super grindy achievements is perfectly fine. Um, you're talking about, so you have the tank ones, get super burned out, and they're a whole, and those are on the low side. I think there's that there's too exclusively grindy achievements and not enough interesting achievements. And that's kind of the big thing. Uh, they have some changes coming to the way achievements are displayed, or at least you're alerted to the presence of certain achievements in areas of the game. But I think that with that, they now need to expand upon achievements you know you need to make them more interesting it's not just about how much of something you can do it needs to be about other little things there need to be you know raid achievements dungeon achievements uh i don't know open world achievements that ask you to, i don't know just things that get you thinking about playing the game a little bit differently things that feel like achievable goals that aren't just insane grinds which is pretty much all of final fantasy 14's achievements i'm not gonna lie honestly most achievements nowadays, even on like other games, have started to turn that. I remember when achievements like were used to be really interesting in games. And I feel like all games have kind of moved away from having really interesting achievements. Uh, there's still some here and there, but I think people are just tired of, uh, or, or, or de like maybe developers are tired of developing them? I, I, I don't know. It just, it feels like that about like a lot of achievements in a lot of games nowadays. They're not always interesting. It's just play the game and you'll get achievements and that's not even an achievement. I don't know. That's how I feel about other stuff as well. But yeah, no, I, I, I think we need more interesting achievements. It's good to have the grindy ones, but have a mix of them. Uh, and secondly, uh, do you think Bismarck is intelligent? Oh, it's a lore question. It seems like all the other primals speak and actively attract followers. Well, I don't remember Bismarck ever doing. No, that thing is dumb as a whale. I guess aptly, but dumb as a whale. Feels dumb as a whale. So I don't know if he's intelligent, but to me, he's dumb as a whale. All right, question number four. Ayo. Okay, now I just pick a question. So let's see, we got three questions you're asking. Glamorous, uh, glamorous in rage. I, there's, uh, there's an I in there. Uh, a spoony stormblood question. Quality of life suggestion change for the duty finder. I think. I'm going to take the third one right here. Let's see. Should the selected duty in the duty finder reset after some time of not using the duty finder? Like it resets your selected duties after five minutes of not interacting with the duty finder being outside of a duty. That's a tough one. There's merits on both ends to keep it. Like if I go to the restroom and I come back, it's nice if it's the same. But I have had plenty of times where I step away from the duty finder and then I come back and I forgot that I was queued up for something else. At least it resets every time you log in, log out. Um, I suppose that this could be a setting for people who frequently have this issue, but I don't know that it's frequent enough 
that I would consider it worth something, I guess, investing UI time into, like to develop UI elements, the, the little checkbox and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's happened to me a couple of times, but never so much that I never am just like, oh, whoops. And then that's it. It's the end of it. I'm not like majorly inconvenienced. Question number five. Hey, Mr. Happy, transferred to Gilgamesh a few days ago. So if I see you, I will give you a bonus of a Crimson Cider. 20k plus market tax. Just give me a bonus that I'm paying for. I feel like that defeats the purpose of it being a bonus. Uh, question. Should members who leave an instance in less than five minutes of lapse receive a higher penalty? I've seen tanks queue into a duty, leave, and then take the 30-minute penalty to requeue after 30 minutes. You know, obviously there's some false positives there where you have people who queue in and then within the first five minutes they go, oh, never mind, I have to, you know, something happened, I'm not going to be able to play for the next 30 minutes. But I think the vast majority of people who do leave in the first five minutes are people abusing the system or just like saying, ah, fuck this instance, I'll just requeue. So... It's something that could be worth exploring. I don't have enough information on the frequency with which it takes place, but I i mean, I've been, as you say, I've gone into Steps of Faith and had three people leave instantly, you know, a tank and two healers, or even the DPS leaving because it's Steps of Faith. I've gone into Chrysalis and seen the same thing. I've gone into plenty of trials or dungeons and stuff and just seen people who are me like, fuck that, Orm Vale. Seen that happen plenty there. I guess I don't know if my anecdotal evidence is necessarily adequate to say that they should, but I think it could be something worth exploring. Uh, but I feel like you're better off finding... Do it the other way around. Negative reinforcement, I feel, is not always the best choice over positive reinforcement. You want them to feel like it's okay for them to stay in the dungeon and less so for them to leave, but that's a hard thing to... Like, what are you going to do? More Oh, more tombstones or... I don't know, more EXP, I don't know, I don't know what you do as positive reinforcement there to, to incentivize them to stay instead of de-incentivizing them to leave. So, uh, again, either way, I think looking at people who abuse leaving in the first five minutes because their cues are so good due to their role could be something that is sufficient to explore into, but I couldn't tell you what the direction they should take is. Question number six. Hey, Mr. Happy, longtime viewer, first time poster, so wanted to give you a shout out, so have a stake of your choosing. Wait, so you wanted to give me a shout out or you wanted to shout or I, I get a stake. That's all I know. That's that's the only part that really matters to me. Uh, I'm not into the rating scene, but recently I joined a few learning groups for 05 and 06 to pass the time. I got my 05 Savage Clear about five weeks ago and my 06 Savage two weeks ago. These things being my first Savage Clears and casually farming them once a week for weekly drops. Cleared Shinryu Extreme last night as well. Uh... And I really love the fight. I've been super excited and wanted to tell one of my favorite streamers about it. But what I wanted to ask you is your opinion on this. Uh, I've had these friends for Final Fantasy XI. seems like forever since we've been close as a family. Well, recently six of them transferred to another server and I hosted a farewell party. Another one of our friends took offense to this and started jumping down my throat and said it was his responsibility to do the part. This sounds like some dumb high school man-baby bullshit that I'm about to read. <laughs> From the person who gave you a hard time, I feel like I'm about to read some man-child dumb baby bullshit and when i read the rest of this goddamn sentence all right let's see a few weeks later our fc friend left his fc to join mine and sent my friend a very rude message calling him out now i'm reading for two people that are doing some man child baby bullshit right now all right basically told him to fuck off and they're not friends anymore since i've tried to bring peace to the situation because him and his wife helped me out through some bad times just ignores me to give some rude emotes if I see you left them. So you're the only one not being a man-child baby bullshit. So credit to you for not being a man-child with some baby bullshit right now. TLDR, grow up. They need to grow the fuck up. I can't stand people who, first of all, at least you had the one friend who was trying to stand up for you telling the other friend he was being some man-child baby bullshit. But that shit's not worth the fucking effort. As soon as you see someone like that, you're just like, fuck that, that person ain't worth my time. I don't care what hard times they sat through. If it didn't, it clearly didn't matter much to them if they got so upset that you, that they didn't get to throw a party in a fucking video game. They're so sad about that, they're gonna disown you. They weren't your fucking friend anyway. You might say they helped you through some hard times, but they clearly didn't mean much to you in this case, because that's just... That's... I don't understand how people log into games and just, like, get obsessed with, like, drama and high school bullshit. I don't know if it's, like, a lack of social skills. I don't know if it's just their mom didn't hug them enough. Growing. I don't get it. I just don't get why in a video game people, like, are so attracted to such a waste of human effort. I don't get it. I just don't. <laughs> I just can't. Just fucking live your life. <laughs> That's it. 
Like, if somebody bothers you, don't do this shit right here. Just, just throw your own party. Who gives a shit? You can throw more than one party. There's so many solutions to this that aren't throwing a fucking hissy fit like these people do. Ugh! Anyway. Uh, how do you handle the situation? Fuck them. That's it. Alright, now as we continue this very mature and adult show, let's move on to the next question. Hey Mr. Happy, first time asker, no bonus, but keep up the good work. Thanks! My question is about Eureka. I was really excited when it came out because as a long time 11 player, I really liked the danger of navigating the area, joining the parties for EXP chains as much as possible, get the best EXP even though it was crap. It's actually, it was, actually the EXP was fine, because I tested the EXP when I first leveled through it a couple weeks later and it was actually really fucking good. And it got better for Solo and Duo later. So it was not bad, but people didn't know how to do it when they were first doing it. Uh, so then anyway, let's see. Soon after, though, people started NM training with much more effective. It turned out to be the only way to play there. I tried it. It wasn't really my thing, so I stopped going. It makes sense. Uh, don't, I didn't mind the grind on the older relics, but this, I can't get myself to enjoy running from NM to NM. Barely even helping at all, other than raising people. Do you think the next levels of Eureka will work in some other way? Yeah. It's always it's going to work that way. Pretty much the whole time. They're basically taking what was the concept of the original relic weapon, which is to run the same content over and over again, and they're applying that to Eureka's actual zone, where you participate in the notorious monster fights, res people, heal people, DPS, whatever it is that you're contributing while you're there. And also, of course, messing with the elemental wheel and whatever it actually means, which is either, you know, for me, I do five in defense on the higher tier stuff and five in offense for the lower tier stuff. Um, but I don't think it's going to change much. I think that ultimately that core concept of being grinding the same thing over and over again, that's always been the core concept of the Zodiac and Anima weapons is always going to remain that way. So uh, there might be some quality of life things that shake it up a little bit. We know that for catch-up mechanics, adding hunts for uh, daily and weekly hunts into uh, at least the old Eureka zones, we don't know about if they're adding into Pagos right away. Uh, as a means for more casual players to participate, but uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see it changing. I just, I personally don't. All right, question number eight. Hey, Mister Happy, longtime viewer, first time asker. So I have a bonus of a Philly cheesesteak, but not from Philly, because screw cheese whiz. Listen, I know that there are people in Philly who like this. I actually, I don't know if you were there. We had this conversation about the cheese whiz. I forget what it was called in the, the Philly cheesesteaks that use cheese whiz instead. I can't remember what the what my chat was telling me they were called. But that's not all Philly cheesesteaks. That's not how all Philly cheesesteaks are made. Those are how the shitty cheesesteaks are made in Philly. So I'll take the not shitty cheesesteaks. I'll take the good ones. So uh, I'll still take the Philly cheesesteak. Just not from the shitty cheese whiz places. Uh, so I have a question about Monk. Not sure if you answered the question before. Do you know how big of a DPS difference it is to use the Riddle of Wind Tornado Kick opener, even just using Tornado Kick on your ninth GCD during Riddle of Fire and getting the stacks back to the PB compared to just doing a normal rotation? So I don't know the exact difference. I've heard people say anywhere from 30 to 40 to over 100, and it's really tough for me to, to I guess, pick one specific area and agree with it because I know that a lot of people can take upper end like high crit percentages or things that are influenced by balance or other buffs and they can apply it to what they would consider the normal difference because it's what they raid with every week. Um, yeah, so you say it right here. I've seen people claim it's as much as 200 or 40. It really depends. I'd say if you probably have no outside assistance, if you don't, t if you take, I guess, average crit variants into it without a uh, higher end crit variants, especially without stacking damage buffs and whatnot, uh, it's going to come down to being about the difference is anywhere between 40 and 200 uh, but it is an improvement i think that is the key thing to take away from it as much as it may not necessarily be the smoothest thing to always use at the very least it is now an excuse to use tornado kick which is something a lot of people were looking for and a lot of people like me were not looking for because the idea seems so ass backwards but with pb on a 60 second cooldown now i suppose i don't really mind all that much uh, I myself have barely had time to really log in and just practice the muscle memory for it. So I try it on occasion, whatever. I've got two 98% parses and 88. And my Kefka is just shit because I just, every week I think I'm going to do okay. Then I risk it and I lose it all. Thank you, Trines. Thank you. Thank you so much. Regardless, uh, I'd say that you're on pace. I'd say that those numbers, that the between 40 and 200 is accurate. It just depends on stacking damage, plus crit variants, direct hit variants, stuff like that. All right, question number nine. Yo, Haparoo. Finger pistols. A, A. A personal question, if I may. I'll have to answer if you don't want to. In some, glass, in some videos, you're wearing glasses, and some you are not. Why is that? Also, why is there a yellow tint? Are you somewhat colorblind? <laughs> somewhat. 
That's underplaying it by a shit ton. Uh, these are gunners. I got these back when I worked in New York City before I was a streamer. I watched, I was, I had been watching streams for a while now, so I had seen them. Uh, a lot of the esports people wearing them. Basically, the tint is to protect from the, uh, the light that comes off the monitors to protect my eyes. Basically, they're eye health glasses at the very least um they're cheap you can buy there's tons of different brands now back then really gunners was the only one that i had known about there's tons of them now that you can look for out there there's prescription ones if you're someone who needs you know the assisted eyesight on top of wanting to block the rays and on top of that there's programs like f.lux which you can download which will help reduce the uh the harmful the harmful light coming from the monitors themselves so i just have them because i used to work in new york city and when i did I was internal tech support, so I'm looking at 15 to 20 different computers a day, and I wasn't going to download F.Lux on all of them, so it was easier to just walk over to Best Buy and grab a pair of these than to do the other. As for colorblind glasses, since I'm sure the question will come up either next week or some other point, yes, I've heard of the colorblind glasses. Yes, they do work, but they don't work for me. The only reason why I say that is because I have so many different forms of colorblindness, or the form that I have is so not just, it's not like a simple, hey, there are these two colors that screw me over. I need, I see things in shades, which means that if, if the shades are too similar, I can't separate them. A blue and a purple can look the same. Yellow on white paper, green and brown, green and red. Like, I can get fucked by anything if the shades are close enough to each other. So, uh, that's why I use these and I don't switch over to, like, colorblind glasses or anything. Question number 10. Sup, Haps? Sup. So it would take, like, six months to redesign Dark Knight from the last live letter. And the first fan fest is six months away. Would they redesign it for 5.0? I mean, jobs always get massive changes going into expansions. I know massive is uh, is a bit of an overstatement. Some jobs get what feel like fewer changes. Other jobs get more, like, huge overhauls, like, uh, like Bard did, for example. Um, that being said, we don't know... When they said it would take at least six months, we don't know that they hadn't started it yet. We don't know that this wasn't something that they could do that's along the lines of 2.1 Warrior or even 4.2 Warrior. Uh, so will they wait till 5.0? I think they will for Dark Knight. I think they'll just give them stuff to make them feel a little bit better now and then worry about Dark Knight as a whole going into the next expansion, taking the feedback properly. Um, instead of actually releasing it around 4.4 timing. Uh, I, I would be happy to be wrong here. They've uh, Clearly they've read the feedback. They've analyzed it they've they've discussed how long it would take that's good that means that they've taken all that information and that feedback to that point which is a good thing because it gives them a better direction going forward and here's the thing if they decide that it's going to wait till 5.0 they have more than six months to actually work on it they're a little bit ahead of themselves on that front so overall i thought the statement was a good thing even if it meant that dark knight's not going to be getting substantial changes now Changing, what was it, eight abilities and the, but the things they listed, I mean, that should still at least improve the quality of life of the job itself for the time being. All right, and the last question on the forums. Hey, uh, Mr. <laughs> says Gaps, but I know you meant Haps. They're right next to each other on the keyboard. How you doing? You doing I? I'm doing I. I'm doing I. You doing I? I'm doing I. Uh, got two questions. One, do you think we'll be able to use Heaven on High to level up our lower level jobs? So lower level means 61 plus. This will be your... Roll free means of, Q of of leveling a job from 61 to 70. Uh, it's not going to be something you'll use from like 1 to 60. You'll still Palace of the Dead for that, but Heaven on High will take over once you get from 61 to 70. Will it be the fastest way? I, I couldn't say, but the fact that DPS won't have to worry about roll restrictions for queuing in is going to be a huge quality of life thing once 4.35 rolls around. And question number two, what games are you hoping to see at E3? Thanks for taking the time to answer my questions. Have a gift of running Ultima Ultimate. Dude, I got to beat that in like a timely manner this time. So what games am I hoping to see at E3? Uh, you know what? There's there's games I want to see and there's games that I expect to see. I really... Uh, there's rumors of a Devil May Cry 5. Not DMC Devil May Cry, the one they remade. Like Dante, the OG Dante returning to form in a Devil May Cry 5. There's rumors of that, and that I really want to happen. Um, I actually was okay with DMC Devil May Cry, because at least gameplay-wise, it, 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 you know, took care of my Devil May Cry itch, but um, if the I would love a Devil May Cry 5 with the OG Dante. I would love it. I just want more Devil May Cry games, to be honest. I just, I love the series. It's one of my favorites of all time, even if it's, you know, not necessarily the most, uh, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It's, 
it's not exactly something that matches everything else you see me play, but I love Devil May Cry. So that would be a big one. What else would I hope to see? Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, I expect to see. Um, they dispelled the rumors of announcing a release date around E3, but I'm still kind of, you know, holding out to see if they do. 7 Remake, I don't expect anything to hear about. Um, maybe more on Octopath, which is due out on July 13th. Uh, I want to see more on the Spider-Man game. One big thing with Square Enix, I want to hear more about that Avengers, the Avengers games they were working on, uh, that they think they had to, they had to take, I think, Eidos and put them on the Avengers games, and they had to take the team that was working on, I don't remember, all I know is they swapped around the Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and, uh, and then moved them between each other, and then also put some of them on the Avengers title. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. Other than that... Is there anything else I'm really expecting? Mm, Death Stranding, maybe something more than a friggin' trailer for once. That other title that Square Enix is working on, the 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 one where they had the the guy who does the art for for Metal Gear. Oh, I can't remember the name of that game. It's just been so long since I've heard about it. Last of Us Two is another one. Uh, mm, there's more. Not Kojima, the artist. The artist, not Kojima. Uh, Life is Strange Season 2. There's there's something that I'm thinking of that I can't remember right now. There's I think this will be 50-50 E3. I, I, I don't expect anything crazy, but I do expect some exciting things. Stuff that I'm not expecting. Uh, obviously, if I'm expecting the unexpected, Left Alive was the name of the one I was that I was thinking of earlier. That's one that I'm also, I'm also expecting something on. But uh, I don't know. I'm I, I'm going to be there. That's all I know. Shenmue three, dude. I'm looking forward to Shenmue three. Uh, Code Vein news. That's that's one that I was thinking of. That's a big one that I was thinking of. More news on Code Vein. Uh, yeah. So there's there's a lot of titles actually. So um, just a lot of follow up on stuff that we already kind of know is in the works or exists or stuff. Also, oh, the big one. More about that from software game that they revealed last year, uh, where everyone wasn't sure if it was Bloodborne two or if it was a continuation of that other series that uh, that they've worked on before. Um, I can't, I don't remember the name of the series, but that one, the 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 from software title from that they that they showed like 20 seconds of um last year that everybody was just like oh that's gotta be bloodborne 2 and then what they thought it was something else i don't know whatever it is that's a big one i want i want more of that so that's gonna be the big one for me but anyway that's gonna be wrap for the questions over on the forums let's see if any of the twitch chat has any decent questions then i need to get some lunch and as you can hear voice getting a little hoarse so i could definitely use something to drink as well twitch chat what do you got for me all right, first question from the Twitch chat, and it's a very Twitch-focused question. This is for the chat, with you celebrating four years of being partnered on Twitch. What are some of your favorite moments in the last four years? Oh, man. Um, four years is a lot of time to pick favorite moments from. Uh, I One that definitely comes to mind is the time I was stalked by Mr. Face on uh, when I was waiting to go into Second Coil. Because that was that was one of the first times that I had taken something from Twitch and just turned it into a clip on YouTube. You know, it just edited it down a little bit. And it was hilarious. And it was awesome. And it was something that, uh, you know, it, it didn't feel like I was being harassed. It felt like it was a good time. You know, it was just hilarious. There's another one where I was also stalked by uh, somebody who I actually knew at the time. Because I didn't know Denmo. Uh, went back when, you know, Mr. Face was still kind of a new thing. Uh, but one of my friends who's in my FC, who's actually won a giveaway here, and I give him shit every time. He he, he won a giveaway for a lightning a signed Lightning Returns Collector's Edition. He was in the same FC as me. So I used to make fun of him, like, yo, how's that signed Lightning Returns? Because I signed that for you. You know? I signed it. I signed it for you. And he's just like, please don't remind me that I have this. And I was like, yeah, you better still have it. But he stalked me on, uh, on like, with, like, a fat Chocobo suit on, kind of in the same way that, uh, what's his face, uh, Mr. Face did. What is his face? Mr. Face. But then randomly, like, a, he had a second character I didn't know about, and he walked up to me with the second character and scared the shit out of me. Because I thought that I was being followed by one, and it turns out I was being followed by the other, and then the original came, it was, it was just a hell of a time. But, uh, yeah. More recently, we have Potion. That's, that's, uh, that's another one. But for... Uh, between those, like, I have so many good moments. Like, I have a lot of happy memories. I have a lot of times that I, I said dumb shit that I regret saying on stream. Like, I've got so many ups and downs. And uh, looking back on the... F I try not to look back on the four years all too much because uh, I always like to think about going forward. With recent times, 
Um, that's been a lot harder. I've kind of just been doing my stream day to day and not really like coming up with any elongated plans outside of picking what I'm going to stream. It's been, uh, I've, I felt a bit like my growth on Twitch is stunted because of it. And, you know, I kind of knew that was going to happen when I came back a couple months ago. So I'm not really thinking about those last four years I'm, I, or at least not specific moments. I'm more thinking about what's been built over those times, what's what it's culminated into uh, both on the Twitch and YouTube side of things and trying to get myself back in the mindset where I can think about the next step and not just think about when I wake up in the morning. OK, what am I doing today? Because that's all I've been able to do for the last like two months approximately minus short bursts of future planning like I did with the May month anniversary which is always which has also been hit or miss because I've had rough times in May for other reasons other other personal reasons so uh it's just if those are the only moments that pop up off the top of my head but I wish I could give you more but uh that's what I got so hopefully you understand all right and that looks like that's going to be the only question we actually take from the twitch chat we had some pretty good conversations but they're not going to be things we throw in here. If you want to join in the conversations we usually have with the back half of the Twitch chat, I do the live Q&A section every Sunday on Twitch, usually between like 1230 and 2 p.m. Pacific. If you get here around 1230 p.m. Pacific, then uh, and you just hang about for a few minutes, it usually doesn't take too long for us to get started up. We had some fun conversations, some fun stories, some good stuff. So uh, thank you, Twitch chat, for your questions. Even if they didn't get included in the video, at least I got to answer the vast majority of them. But that's going to be a wrap for this video. We have one last thing to do before we get going, though, and that's to thank our sponsors over on Patreon. They've been helping combat hashtag demonetize. And when I talk about high school drama, man, child, baby bullshit like I did earlier in this one, I still get to do this for a living. But anyway, uh, we get to thank our patron of light. First off, Kuja Cross of the Genova server on the YouTube side of things. There will be an image here on the Twitch side of things. Look at my beautiful face and tell me it's not beautiful because it's not. Uh, thank you, Kuja Cross of the Genova server for the constant support. Appreciate it for it's it's been crazy, man. It's been it's been months now. You've been at that mark. So you've been really pulling it out, proving you are indeed the patron of light. We also have a bunch of spots. It's a long list, guys. So if you've never heard this list before, strap in. That's why I do them at the end of the show most of the time. We have Mizra. These are our standard sponsors first, by the way. We have Mizra, Red Wings of, of uh, Red Wings of Baron FC from Zalera, Frey Blackheart, Sidus Orion Shiva, Sid Hellwind of Gilgamesh, Afro Ninja from Malboro, Cheese Guy from Leviathan, Sploda, That Lame Weeb, Ashnami of Cerberus, Argati Tristan from Midgard's Armor, Fafarian, Rendell, Giraffes Will Rule, Giraffes Will Rule, Stevie Rex, and Neon. We have our elite sponsors. We have Asuka Wake from the Genova server. Lim Hold on. Lamilla Nella of Midgard Stormer. All right. Sarah and the Avalanche family on Malboro. Johnny Odin of Tonberry. Nyark of Plan Vizsla. Kifka and the Grey Eagles on Exodus. Dark Graver. Kat Ayoshi from Kujata. Skia Symphonia from Ragnarok. Roz Evan from Exodus. Rylander West Austin Purple Warrior. Andrew Red Steel on Exodus. Lexi Valentine. Mentar and the Revivus FC from Zodiac. Sour Cream and Tribes from Genova. Renoa Chikara, Goisha Valfer of Siren, Hirsch Versh of Fairy, Phoenix Down FC on Goblin, Saren and Saren from Zodiac. I always go to Saren from Zodiac and I think there's more names on the elite list and I just go, oh, I've got to cut myself off now. Then we have our premium sponsors. We have Dat Neko, Diablo, Holy Tabasco, Red Thorn Asura, Sura, Kern Ioni, Asken Hawk, Oscar, Crash 015, Mustang, and Serenity FC on Ultras, Kat Kazuma, Serial Kira and the Reckless Tea Party on Cactar, Ignis Fairgun from Diablo, Celestra Fanfret, Not Quarters from Excalibur, Corvus Moonscar, Private Mikey, Spike, Nadia Karasami, Rudy Rudiger, Tank Colossus, Killer Hackman, Raw Jr., Ramil Gaming, and Killtastic Jones. Woof! Okay. Now, before I lose my voice or before I just injure my throat from not being hydrated enough, I think we can wrap up this video. If you have questions for next week, either tune in at those times I told you earlier or ask your questions in the Dream Network forums in the description of the video. Real quick, drop a question there. We've had plenty of first timers, plenty of repeat questions. Feel free to drop them in. But anyway, that's going to be a wrap on the Twitch, on the YouTube side of things. Twitch, I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes. So YouTube, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, take care.